Hi everyone, I welcome you all in a new video tutorial. This time, we are going to learn about response spectrum analysis. In this video, I will discuss what is response spectrum analysis, when is this analysis performed on buildings, how this analysis is done in ETAPS 2019. Before that, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads. Let's understand what response spectrum analysis is. Response spectrum analysis is a dynamic analysis which is performed on high-rise buildings, tall and irregular structures to know the maximum response under seismic loadings. Here, the response means the total displacements, forces, drifts, and stresses in a structure subjected to seismic loads. Now the question is, when response spectrum analysis is performed? Normally, in case of low rise and regular structures, which is having time period less than 0.4 seconds, it is possible to predict the translational mode of the building as we only consider the single mode case. For such cases, we go with linear static analysis using static equivalent method. However, in the case of high-rise buildings or irregular structures, it is not possible to predict the actual response of a structure with respect to single mode only. In that case, we use multiple mode cases for dynamic analysis. As you can see in this figure, when a lateral force or seismic acceleration is applied on a joint of a model, different mode cases are obtained as shown in this figure. From mode 1 to nth number of modes, in response spectrum analysis, we combine all the modal cases to obtain a single response of a structure. In order to perform the response spectrum analysis in ETABS, let's open the model in ETABS program. As the model is already open here, so the building shown here is this 24-story building. The total height of the building is 282 feet and the natural time period for the mode 1 for this building is computed to be 2.18 seconds. Before applying the response spectrum analysis, we need to define the load patterns. So in order to define the load patterns, go to define menu, click load patterns. As you can see, I have already defined the load patterns. Let's see the parameters defined in AC716, seismic loading. So along the x-axis, you need to check x-direction plus centricity. In my case, the SS and S1 values are to be taken as 1.68 and 0.75. Site class is P, response modification factor R is taken as 8. System over strength omega 3, deflection amplification is taken as 5.1, as this is a residential building, so occupancy importance factor i is taken as 1. If you want to know more about these coefficients, I have already made a video. Similarly, we need to add the parameters along y axis as well. After defining the load pattern, we need to define the mass ratio. So in order to define the mass ratio, go to the define menu, then mass ratio. So we need to modify the defined mass source. So here, check on the specified load patterns. As per code, we need to consider the total dead load of the building plus 25% of the live load. So as it is already done here, click OK. After that, we need to define the modal cases. So in order to define the modal cases, go to the Define menu. Then click Load Cases. Along modal cases, we need to modify or show the case. So if you want to keep the default name is model, so keep as it is. Load case types, select the load case as model. So there are two ways 
two methods one is eigen value method and then another is the ritz method for the modal analysis so we always prefer to go with eigen uh, value method so here we need to select non iterative based on mass click ok so by default when you perform the analysis the number of modes or the maximum number of modes would be 12 but in my case I have inserted 40 number of modes considering the height of the building so you need to leave rest of the things as it is and then click OK so this is how we can quickly define the modal case and after defining the modal case we need to define the response spectrum functions so in order to define the response spectrum function we need to go to the define menu then functions then response spectrum so choose the code I am choosing the latest AC716 then click add new function so here you need to define the function name so for example I am defining RS function and we are applying a constant damping ratio of 5% so for spectral acceleration so we need to insert the data which we have already defined in seismic load pattern so this would be 1.67 and here it is 0 0.5 and long term period is 8, site class was P and that's it click OK click OK let me verify the values from the load veterans so it is 0 0.75 and 1.68 so let's change the values in RS function zero point seven five and one point six eight and then click OK so after defining the mass source and the response spectrum function we need to run the analysis in order to see the mass participating ratio for the modal cases So as you can see the analysis is done first we need to check the number of modes considered for the modal cases are sufficient or not so for our case so for our case we have considered 40 number of modes so according to AC716 the combined modal mass of the modal case considered should be at least 90% of the actual mass along both directions so in order to see the modal mass participating ratio we need to go to the display tab then click on show tables so long show tables so under structure output we need to click model information so under model information we need to select model participating mass ratio and then click OK so as you can see at the last mode which is the 40th mode so mass participating ratio along x-axis is is 99 percent and along y-axis is, is also along 99 percent and here it is also 99 and 99 percent that means the number of modes considered in our case are sufficient so is the number of modes considered in our case for the model analysis are sufficient so we need to define the RSM function so in order to define the load case go to the load case then click add new load case so load case is response spectra load case type is response spectrum so mass source is to be taken from the default mass source which we have defined already under loads applied we need to apply the load along x-axis and y-axis 
So u1 is x and u2 is y. Now, so here you can see the skill factor, which is a very important parameter in order to determine or define the response spectrum case. So the formula for a skill factor is Ig over R, where I stands for occupancy factor, G is acceleration, and R is response reduction factor. As we are dealing in FPA system of units or US customary, so the value for G would be 32.2 feet per second square, and R taken in our case is 8. So this becomes so 1 into 32.2 this is fit 1 into 32.2 this is in fit per second square we need to convert it into inches and 386.4 as you can see and divide this value by 8 so we need to put scale factor as 48.3 so just write 48.3 here so other parameters we need to consider modal cases and combination methods so there are various combination methods out of all the combination methods listed here CQC method is considered accurate and here we need to also click CQC3 and then click OK. Click OK. Run the analysis again. So go to the display menu, show tables. Within the analysis results, we need to check the base reactions and then click OK. So from output case, we need to select three cases, EQX, EQY, and response spectrum. So now we need to compute the ratios. Now EQX and EQY is the base shear calculated under equivalent static method. And this value is the base shear computed under response spectrum function so let's find out the ratio of these two along x-axis as well as along y-axis open the calculator so the ratio of these two will be 3 to 0 6.7 to 1 divided by 1 9 6 9 .415. so it comes out to be 1.62 along x-axis and the ratio along y-axis is 3206.721 divided by 1958.1 sorry 3206.721 divided by 1958.27 and it is around 63 percent but it is not 85 percent so according to the code the ratio should be equal to the ratio should be equal to 85 percent so now we need to go for rescaling of the base here first we need to unlock the model sorry First, we need to unlock the model. Now, go to the Define menu. Select Response Spectrum and then click Modify Road Cases. So, we need to apply the rescaling factor. So, for this, open the calculator. So, for this, open the calculator. So, the rescaling factor will be 48.3 multiplied by 0 0.85 and the ratio of static base shear over RS or response spectrum base here which was 1.629 and the new scale factor is 66.87 similarly we need to do along the y-axis as well you can also keep the same let's calculate based on the ratios 
So again, it will be 8.3 multiplied by 0 0.85 and multiply by 1.637 and it is 67.20 67.20 and click OK OK now again run the analysis so as you can see the analysis is done again so in order to check the values go to the display menu show tables and click OK so now under output case again we need to select the three cases sorry the response spectrum case so now if you calculate the ratios so long x-axis the ratio is 3 to 0.025 divided by 3 to 0 0.6 0.721 this is multiply by 100 so it is 85 percent along x-axis similarly along y-axis it is 272 4.52 272 4.52 divided by 3206.72 and it is approximately 84.96 that means around 85 percent along y axis this is the newly scaled up base here for the respond spectrum function so now based on this value or with respect to this value of base here we can find out the story displacement drifts and forces in our model so this brings to the end of today's tutorial if you found this tutorial useful, please do like and share. And if you have any doubt, please write in a comment section. For more updates, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads. Thank you and have a nice day.